Welcome to Real Talk Manitoba, a podcast bringing you monthly insights into all things real estate from Manitoba Realtors. Well, thanks so much for joining us for episode 10 of Real Talk Manitoba. I'm your host, David Von Mayenfeld, and this episode, we are stepping outside of Manitoba to connect with a realtor in warm and sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. We have Eddie Lack with us today. Eddie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Now, Eddie, it is fitting to give you a proper introduction. I know many of us in Manitoba who follow hockey incredibly closely will no doubt recognize your name. But for our listeners in the real estate community who may not be avid hockey fans, allow me to elaborate because we have a Manitoba connection here. So after growing up in Sweden, Eddie moved to Winnipeg in 2010 as a 22-year-old and served as the starting netminder for the Manitoba Moose. Now keep in mind, this was the year before the Jets returned. The Bombers at the time were a splinter of their current championship form, so the Moose were the top ticket in town. And after a very solid year with the team, Eddie moved on to an NHL career and, well, the rest is history. So Eddie, obviously we're going to talk real estate today, but before we do, let's touch on your time in Manitoba. So you're 22 years old in a brand new city. What was your first impression of the place and what memories stand out to you the most? My first impression was it's really cold. I mean, (laughs) the first thing I bought was a Canada goose jacket, I remember. And I was like, all right, whatever happens, at least I'm going to stay warm. I really liked Winnipeg and to come from Sweden and obviously the moose being like the hottest ticket in town, uh, we still got a ton of fans. We got a lot of media coverage for like the games and everything and it was just like fun playing in front of such uh, passionate fans i mean growing up in sweden you must have been used to the cold a little bit though right yeah yeah nothing like nothing like 40 below or whatever we get here no exactly i mean where i'm from in sweden i kind of get we get minus 10 at times that's kind of the coldest minus 40 was that definitely a new experience for me well, like they say, minus 10 is pretty much shorts and t-shirt weather here in Manitoba. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so let's move on to real estate. You've been practicing for a number of years now. Uh, what inspired you to become a realtor after your pro hockey career? So my family's been doing real estate back home in Sweden since for like as long as I I know it was something that I've always been interested in I've been investing in real estate when I was still playing hockey and just uh, something that I've always been passionate about it's uh, definitely something that I've always knew that I kind of wanted to do when I retired I just didn't know where I was going to do it, if I was going to be somewhere here in the States or if I was going to move back to Sweden or like in Canada. I wasn't really sure. I'm glad you said that because I wanted to ask, following your time here with the Moose, you spent the next few years between Chicago, Vancouver, North Carolina, New Jersey. You obviously had a chance to see a lot of great places in North America. So what ultimately led you to choose the Scottsdale area? It was actually the time when I played in Calgary and I got traded to New Jersey in the middle of the season. And I only had like three months left on my contract. New Jersey wasn't going to make the playoffs. And like, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen after. And me and my wife been talking about getting something in the States. Instead of moving all our stuff from Calgary to New Jersey, we kind of figured that this was a good a good time for us, you know? So all I said was, I want some someplace warm. I want some place where I can play golf year round. And we looked at Scottsdale, we looked at Florida, we looked at California, and we basically just looked at the map and we picked this out of street luck. We really love it here. So I guess you mentioned kind of year-round golf and warm weather, so that probably ruled out uh, Canada for you, because I know Vancouver, you were a fan favorite, and uh, you had some good experiences in, in Winnipeg and in Calgary as well. Yeah, so... My wife is American, so for me to be able to work and everything, Canada was kind of out of the picture early. The U.S. was kind of what we were focusing on. I really loved Vancouver, and I could see myself living there at some point, but with like work permits and everything like that, 
it just wasn't possible. That makes sense. Now, can you tell our, our listeners a little bit about the real estate market in Scottsdale? I know it's a popular region for Manitobans and Canadians to own perhaps a second property or an investment property. Is there a particular segment or segments of the market that most appeal to Canadian buyers? During COVID, we didn't really see any Canadians, right? I had a few sales with Canadians that wanted to get rid of their place down here. And then the last year, it's kind of exploded again. And now everyone is looking for, just like you said, a second home or a rental property. And so there's kind of two areas that I feel like most Canadians like here. So one is Mesa. A lot of Canadians like Mesa because there's a direct flight to the Mesa airport from Calgary. The house prices and everything are not as expensive there as the second place that I was going to mention, which is Scottsdale. So most of my clients that I got from Canada in the last year has been looking at the rental market here and nothing's been hotter than Scottsdale, mostly because of the Airbnb business, because we get so many bachelor and bachelorette parties that come down here and it's just a really good return on your investment. For sure. Well, absolutely. Those, uh, those direct flights are a huge draw, especially for us here in Manitoba. So I wanted to ask you, could you share a couple pieces of advice for Manitobans who are starting to think about purchasing a property in the sun? What are the first things you should do? I would first look at what kind of property do you want? Do you want a second home? Do you want uh, just a place that you and your family and friends can come enjoy? Uh, or are you looking at an investment property. Most people look at some kind of hybrid there where they want the place that they get to be rented when they're not down here. So it pays for their stays. That's your first question that that you kind of have to answer. The second one is what area do you want to be in? What do you like to do? Do you like to golf and just hang out at the house or would you more be interested in living close to all the restaurants and bars and all the nightlife that Scottsdale has to offer? So is there anything that comes to mind that a potential Canadian buyer might not know about Arizona and its real estate market? We have what's called FERPTA. So it's a foreign tax when you sell here. Nothing is different when you buy here, but when you sell, it gets a little complicated with tax loss, with setting up the correct LLC or C Corp. These things take a little bit of time. So I would say just start that process early. So once you find a place that you like, you're already prepared and you know what it's like going to take for you to take that place. That's some good advice. And I guess probably get financing figured out beforehand exactly. too, if that's something. Yeah. 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 What we do for the financing part, because difference in the States here is so all these lenders or mortgage brokers, they sell their loans on the secondary market. There's so, so many rules. And I know from experience that the Canadians get a lot higher rate because of the different rules and regulations here. So what we have found is that we work with the portfolio lenders here because they will only lend whatever is in their bank. So they have a few different rules and everything. We have a few portfolio lenders that we work with that seem to be the best fit for my Canadians. Tell us why investing in Arizona real estate is the right thing to do, what would you tell to our listeners? I mean, it's great ROI. <laughs> there you <laughs> like, go. I can talk and I can go on about what it's like living here with the golf and the weather and just the people that live here. But if you're looking at a, from an investment standpoint, strictly, I mean, the return on your investment is, is awesome. Eddie, I want to thank you so much for being a, a guest on the podcast and for sharing with us your insight on the real estate market in Scottsdale, Arizona to our listeners. Thank you so much for joining us on episode 10 of Real Talk Manitoba. My name is David Von Mayenfeld, and please stay tuned for the next episode and even more great discussion on the real estate market in Manitoba.